I accepted Christ when I was young, about 10 years old. The only person that I saw live out their faith was my grandmother. And she loved Jesus. Um, she taught me about Jesus. However, I didn't know anything about discipleship and I went back to the same neighborhood, same toxic household. Um, my mother was on drugs, my dad was an alcoholic. Um, so that wasn't really conducive to my walk with Christ. And so I rebelled um, just with all the bottled up hurt and emotions that I was going through, especially becoming a teenager and not really having anyone to shape my walk with Christ, I rebelled and it cost me years of my life in prison. The last time I was on my way to prison, I was facing 25 years of life. And I got a call from the chaplain and he told me my grandmother was on an ICU, like something inside of me just broke. And being a habitual criminal, I didn't have a bond. And so my lawyer, he had to approach the judge to ask the judge once she did pass a few days after that, if I could go to the funeral and the judge denied it. And so I just remember at that time, I was like, wow, Lord, you know, I've squandered my life thus far. And I knew if I ever wanted to see my grandmother again, something in me had to change. When I truly started walking with the Lord, that was 2011, and I just totally surrendered. I was like, Lord, if it's gonna be prison ministry and you're gonna use me to speak to prisoners for the rest of my life, whatever the case may be, and I need you to intervene like never before. Uh, the Lord just done a beautiful thing with reuniting me with my best friend, who's now my wife, Alicia Wilson. We were friends for seven years. She never judged me. Um, she, she spoke life into me, even knowing that I was a drug dealer. Um, and she was just on fire for Christ, walking with the Lord, and I respected that. I never pursued her in, in a romantic way or dating. I just respected her friendship. And so we remained friends for seven years. And when I was home, I remember she inboxed me. I was on Facebook, and then I see a big, I see Torrance on Facebook. This is Torrance, but it doesn't look like Torrance. Because when I met Torrance, Torrance was a hot mess. He was just like, not the Torrance that we know, praise the Lord. So when I saw him, I was like, oh my goodness. You can tell that the Lord had transformed this guy. And I was like, just saying, I'm so proud of you. I see like the glory of God all over you and I'm proud of you and all those things. Um, Cause I had been praying for him to give his life to the Lord. We didn't reunite. I didn't even see her until after I had been home for a year. A year later, we were married. Now here we are, almost four years later. The first thing that I can remember is us wanting to glorify the Lord with our marriages. We wanted to serve together. Yeah. And so that was very important for us. It was huge. I was meeting so many beautiful, broken women um, that were homeless and they were living in their cars with their kids and my heart would just break for them and I walked in the house and I was crying I was sad and we had a conversation um, and I said are you like it's really on my heart to help her and he said let's do it we said that when whenever the Lord blessed us to have more mm -hmm. we wanted our, our home to even be to use our home to glorify God and be ministry and have a place um, where people could be, know the truth and hear the truth of the gospel. And it's been a year, it's been a, an amazing year actually. Um, we've had, we've helped about 15 women. Yeah. I've been able to baptize three, but we've had six baptisms yeah. total. The Lord has just, He's favored us in that. The word difference maker means to me, um, someone that assesses a situation and asks God how can they play a part in what he's already doing and, and make a difference and make a change for the better.